What can I say about this distance notion? Well, I claim, and this is where I'm going to let you do this part, the distance between x and k is a continuous function. This is using some of Laura's idea of x. Fix k, move x around. I claim this distance is going to be continuous. Okay. Oh, really? Okay, that's very easy. Use triangle inequality and change, you know, x and uh, compare distance between x and another distance, uh, another point y. That's close. Okay. So this is, I'm going to leave you to show this. All right. Okay, so then what? Well, if this these sets cover, then x is in at least one of the balls, yes? Or one of these covering sets, yes? And so the distance between x and its complement is going to be non-zero, yes? Now, if x is not in a ball, then the dis in a covering set, this one, then the distance between x and the complement of this is what? Zero. Okay? So, we only, only have finitely many covering sets. Let's look at the distance between x and all, uh, all the covering sets' complements. What would it mean if I found, what would it mean if, there, if I found a delta, a, a Lebesgue number delta? What would that mean? Yeah, would you agree the fact if I could throw pancakes down and have them land in a set, that's really saying that this distance from one of the complements is at least is a bigger than delta. Right? So if, if I could show that for at least one of the sets there's a minimum delta uh, ball around uh, around a point x that separates that minimum distance delta to a complement, I'm in good shape. Yes? So here's the slick idea. Let's look at all distances between x and its complement. And uh, OK, let's look at distance between x and u alpha sub i complement. There's one for every i. Now, um, I'm, tr I'm hoping to show that, this, that the minimum of all of these is small, is bigger than 0, right, for every x. Well, look. Um, you can't stop me from adding all these up and, and dividing by n. So this takes their average. i goes from 1 to n. This is a function of x. What can I say about this function, which is the average distances to the, to the, the complements? It must be continuous because it's a sum of continuous functions, right? Oh, OK. What else? It's defined on a compact set. So it's continuous function on a compact set. So by theorem we discussed last time, it must do what? Attain its maximum minimum. And actually, which, what am I concerned with, actually? It's minimum. Whatever its minimum value is, I have no idea what it is, but it attains its minimum value. Maybe it's, its minimum value uh, It happens to be, oh, I don't know, let's call it delta. What would it mean for the average of a bunch of distances to be at most, uh, at, at least delta? It'd mean one of them is at least delta. And that's all I need. And that's the set that the pancake falls in. OK? So it attains its minimum value delta. <coughs> so if f of x is always bigger than delta, then um, at least one of the distances 
u i uh, complement, u alpha i complement, uh, is bigger than or equal to delta. Uh, and so, so for this i, the ball of radius delta around x lives completely in u alpha i. That's what, that's what that distance thing means. OK? Yes? Ooh, excellent. That's the one thing we have not actually said. Why is delta bigger than 0? Jacob? Okay, so um, uh, so what's so the fact that this this thing is a cover means that what for every x what it's in one of them. So this function, this function has to be non-zero everywhere. Yes, everywhere. So its minimum value has to be bigger than zero. Okay, so um, notice delta is bigger than zero because f of x is strictly bigger than zero at each x since uh, uh, since the u sub alpha i are a cover. Right, and, and w notice we're really using the fact that it attains its minimum value, right? Because you might worry, yeah, maybe this function's bigger than zero, but its infimum is zero. Well, its infimum can't be zero because this function achieves its minimum somewhere, and that minimum is always bigger than zero. Excellent question. Okay, uh, very nice. What do we have? We have uh, now established, in fact, um, our claim that a continuous function on a compact set achieves, uh, sorry, is it must be uniformly continuous. So this uh, is true by the Lebesgue number. Well, by the Lebesgue covering lemma, but this delta that we're looking for is the Lebesgue number. 